Thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Today they have sponsored us with some PCBs for the first time. Although these are not real PCBs. These are uh, PCB material without any copper or traces or anything like that. These are going to be used to make hopefully simple to make and uh, reliable weapon systems. This is actually not my idea. This is uh, Hugh who came to Robot Havoc 5, did this in his robot Bal, Bal bot. I will put it on the screen because I'm not sure I'm pronouncing this correctly. Uh, and it works pretty well for him. So I figured I was gonna try this out myself give this a go and see how it works. I gotta say, these PCBs look really, really good, considering that these are some interesting routed shapes and they feel pretty strong. Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic. <laughs> To test these out, I needed to hit something really, really hard with them. So I almost put them into 99 red balloons, swapped them out, put 99 red balloons up into the full combat class and just ran 99 red balloons. However, these things are designed to be fairly easy to do. And while I could potentially fit one into 99 red balloons, the shaping that I would need to do on the teeth for these weapons is more than an easy thing to do. So I figured I wanted something new that I could test these out with that I could then make very simple, very easy teeth, the type of teeth that somebody with very low tools is able to make and able to run with this particular system. So I had a different idea, but we're gonna talk about that one at a later date. Uh, because instead we're going to run these as a horizontal, but not just any horizontal. So let's get some printing happening. And first I tried out ABS. My ABS is just not cooperating with me right now. It is cold here in Australia right now. And uh, yeah, no, ABS is no go. So we're gonna do a PLA chassis. It should be fine, especially considering I'm planning a HDPE front. PLA chassis printed at 0.2 millimeter layer heights with 20% infill, two side walls and four top and bottom layers. Should be plenty strong enough for what it is we are about to do. And there it is. This is essentially a copy of a robot that I ran a long, long time ago, uh, slightly crude. And instead of being just a straight wedge bot that we are going to bolt HDP armor to, we are going to do my typical thing of bolting a drone arm in to accept a weapon motor. And some of you looking at this right now may have realized what we are about to do. We are about to do a sidewinder style design where we have a weapon sitting out one side. Essentially the whole idea is to drive into somebody and spin and smack them with the weapon, uh, not with the weapon arm, but we will get there. We are gonna move on with attaching this arm and in the past I have glued my arms in place, but I think today we're actually going to just try and bolt this all together and see how that in particular goes. It shouldn't be too bad. We All we need to do is put in four bolts here and that should be enough to hold the entire arm in place. No problems. With that done, I'm getting the impression of how ridiculous this thing is going to be off the screen and also thinking that I really hope we have some extra weight left over because even right now, this thing is really heavy to this side. So we may need to be packing a ton of weight in this edge just to keep this wheel on the ground and allow us to drive properly. Oh, I didn't think about that. Oh no. <laughs> it is time to talk about the front wedge. This here is our mock-up of the front wedge, which is going to bolt on out the front here, obviously as a front wedge does, but this is not gonna cut it. So we are instead going to use three mil black HDPE, which I've had lying around forever and we're finally gonna actually get a bit of use out of. So we need to cut this and drill this and sand a flat edge on the front of it get that all bolted up in place. Now let's talk weapon system. Normally for a build like this, I would be running an 1806 motor, which is what I'm going to do again. And I would just slap a laser cut hardox bar right on the 1806 and away we go. However, in this case, as mentioned, I am using Hughes method and trying this out. So the way 
Hugh did his and the way I am now then doing mine is having a sandwich, having two PCBs that sandwich weapon teeth in between them. But of course, we can't be adding laser cut parts to that weapon because that kind of defeats the purpose of doing this. So instead, we are using this. This is horrible galvanized steel from the hardware store. It is comes in like a meter long thing. It is 20 mil wide and three mil thick. So the idea is to cut some chunks out of this and wedge the weapon between these. If I can do this. Yeah, look at that, and then bolt it down into place. Uh, and we might even need to print a little spacer that goes between the two centerpieces just to hold everything together. Now, this has a couple of advantages other than the fact that it should be very, very easy to do. Uh, it's also going to weigh a whole lot less than a similarly sized full hard ox bar, which when we were talking about the whole robot tipping over to one side, very helpful. Okay, I think we are ready to go on final assembly here. We have everything all together pretty much ready for this final bit. And I think the first thing we're gonna do is try this weapon system out because realistically, I probably actually need to be very careful about exactly how I line all these parts up because they are a little bit interesting and not exactly symmetrical, which is a bit of a problem really. Uh, but hopefully by having sanded them a ton, uh, they will be good enough uh, and balanced enough that this weapon will actually work. Also, uh-oh, one of our, our bolts don't want to go through both parts. That could be an issue. These are a little bit of a tight fit on here. Hopefully they're balanced. I have absolutely no idea and we really won't know until uh, it's basically time to spin up, really. Okay, so there is one weapon. I have no idea if this thing is balanced or not, what this is gonna do when we try and spin it up, uh, but we do have a weapon. Oh, surprisingly, like, Normally if something's unbalanced, you feel it when you uh, spin it by hand. And in this case, I'm pretty happy with that. If that's unbalanced, it's not that unbalanced. It could be a lot worse. This actually, let's turn my, uh, my impression of this whole project around a little bit. Even with my uh, mediocre balancing skills, it's actually come out balanced then, wow, or balanced enough, I should say. Obviously it's not gonna be super, super balanced, but look, as long as it's balanced enough to do the job, that's all we really care about. One weapon, complete and ready to rock and roll. All right, I think we're going to uh, blast through the rest of this because the rest of this build is not that exciting. It's literally just uh, putting on electronics, front armor, and top plate. And there we go, one brand, brand new ant weight. I mean, it's made up of all sorts of different bits and pieces going on here, but I, it seems to be okay. Now, the big couple of questions that I don't know the answer to are, first of all, weapon testing, but second of all, weight. How are we actually going on weight? Here we go. Oh no. 157.6, oh, that might be unredeemable at this point. Maybe with a clear top plate, we might be able to make weight, maybe. We are now at 150 grams exactly. I have more stuff that I can do if I need to uh, change these bolts out at the front. They will save me just a little bit, which should be enough to drop things down if I need to like change this weapon up, for example. <laughs>
Okay, some final thoughts on this build. Uh, we are now actually post a whole event. So if you want to see this thing fight, make sure you subscribe because there will be a fight report video coming up next week for this whole robot and how it went at uh, ARC's September meet. I was going to talk at the end of this build process about cutting these teeth and the fact that they were a little bit of a pain, to be honest, and I dragged out a bunch of different tools. And in fact, I dragged out a lot of different tools to get this robot running, but half the tools were to make this HDPE front plate and half of them were to make the actual angled or the teeth for this spinner. And at the end of the day, I really could have done the teeth on this spinner with a hacksaw and a Dremel. That's really all I would have needed. I think this is a very, very approachable way of building a uh, combat robot weapon. And I was surprised at how well this thing spun in the test box and all the way through the competition as well, considering that it is a hand-built weapon. I didn't really feel like I was getting huge amounts of vibration out of it or anything. I actually felt like it did pretty well for something that has no right to be balanced in any way, shape or form. It actually performed fairly admirably. So I like this technique, I think is what I'm gonna say at the end of this video, I really, really do. And to get some more ins uh, insight into why I'm saying that, do stick around and I will see you next week for the fight report for this guy and you can, uh, you can watch it actually hit some things and see if these, uh, these PCBs have held up. Anyway, that's it for now. I hope you have enjoyed this one and I will see you in the next video.